And Mike, very good evening to you. Now, the big thing you announced today, or the, that you called for today, is an internet sales tax. How would it work? Uh, so, it's very simple, just like VAT. So, uh, whatever sales a, a, an internet company make, they have to pay a 20% tax, and that would apply for, uh, from abroad or in the UK. The only thing that would prevent them from having to pay the 20% the on all their internet sales is if they did at least 80% of their turnover through traditional high street stores. So, someone like Sports Direct, which is probably on path, like many other retailers, to end up doing 40% of its sales online, would have to think twice now about closing stores or, if not, reopening stores or going, if you like, back into sort of smaller cities, big towns, so we can keep our sales at 80% in the physical retail, i.e. the high street. Now, you said today to MPs, the high street is dead. Yeah. At the bottom of the swimming pool, I think you said. Yeah. I mean, so would this actually bring some of these locations back to life, or is this just about saving what we've got now? I, I think the high street is actually in a bit of a death spiral at the moment. So the, the most important thing is, before we even worry about saving the person on the bottom of the swimming pool who has died, is let's st stop another couple falling in and see if we can save them. That's how I would look at the problem. What about some of these pure pay internet retailers, the likes of Boohoo.com and yeah. Amazon? I mean, this is they're going to scream blue murder at this. Yeah, they are, uh, but they they have to accept they have to level up the f playing field because in the end it, 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 it isn't a le level playing field. Even though I'm poacher gamekeeper, I'm both sides of this. Now I can understand it from the internet side. They will hate this, but they will adjust. They will maybe open up physical stores. They will open up stores that they can in, in their local high streets. You can actually go and deliver, click and collect, and that counts towards their retail turnover. So that helps them to get to the 80 per cent. Have you heard from any other retailers about... I mean, people like Justin King, the former Sainsbury's boss, has also yeah. called for an online sales tax. Have you, have you heard back from people saying, good on you for saying this? Y yes, but I, I honestly don't want to name names, but I, I agree with people like Justin King. We need to do something, and we need to do it now. It's no good debating it for three years, because all the time that, that the high streets that were above average, all of a sudden before below average, all of a sudden... And I'm not naming names, but for whatever reason, an M&S or a Debenhams pull out of that high street, it all but kills it. And then an SD thinks, well, if they're not going to be here, maybe we don't renew our lease and maybe we start moving out. And then there's not a lot anybody can do. I just believe we ought to act now, even if it's not in the very short term, in uh, SD's group's benefit. And what about House of Fraser, which you bought? You yeah. said all 59 stores can't feasibly stay open realistically. Yeah. What's the ideal number of stores for that group? Probably a lot less than the 80% that I promised from a financial thing. But we're trying to look past the very short term of House of Fraser. We believe, hopefully, things will happen to save the high street. So if I actually did it off financial, I would, I, well, would, I can guarantee you over half them would have to close. So there's only so much we can do before we have to, everybody has to dig in and help. So that's, that's the way I look at it. Now, you told the MPs today you'd like to see House of Fraser working much more closely with Debenhams, in which you own 27%. You've written yeah. the value of your stake down to zero. What's yeah. your ultimate ambition with Debs? Oh, ultimate ambition. It, it, it's, a, it, it's a bit like a moving feast. What we really would have liked, because I, I didn't think I would be owning House of Fraser. I had an 11% stake in it. I didn't think I'd end up being the owner. What I did think is that we would plus minus try and do with Debenhams what we'd, we're, we're going to do with House of Fraser. And that's basically give people the right product at the right time at the right price. It sounds very simple, but you need a healthy high street to be able to do that. So I think Debenhams has got an absolutely almighty task. I'm happy to work with them. I'm happy to discuss things. I'm happy to see if there's any synergies where we can work together. But that is a very, very tough ask they've got with their historic rental agreements that 
basically the current management were nothing to do with. Well, obviously, the way around that for Debs is either a company voluntary agreement or, yeah. in the worst case scenario, going into administration. I mean, would, yeah. would you be interested in buying Debs if it went into administration? I, I, I look at all things. So, t to me, I would say yes. Uh, yes, by the way, I, I do think Debenhams needs to do a CVA because the, the, the rents are wrong. You know, I don't care who's running Debenhams. It, 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 these wrong rents that were set in 2006, 7, whenever they were, they're probably 50% above where, what they would have to pay in the market now. I mean, interesting thing, when you bought House of Fraser, I mean, you paid £90 million for the business. That was largely for the stock. You've just paid £95 million for one freehold up in Glasgow. I mean, yeah. you, you clearly perceive value in the estate. Yes, no, there are, there are with the House of Fraser uh, uh, stores, there are some absolutely, um, some of them are just incredible. So you will get, like anything, a, a minority that are just, they're just uh, in the league of their own. But people aren't talking about the, the, the few, they're talking about the many. Now, the many are going to need a lot of help. But the logical conclusion of what you just said is that ultimately House of Fraser and Debenhams could merge. Yeah, that they could merge, and in my opinion, they should at least work very closely together. Because they should. Think of the, all the distribution cost savings. Think how they need to, to work together with each other. You know, there's all sorts of things they could buy together. Then the shipment costs, product from the Far East, they could share freight, they could get best practices. They could make a difference if they work together, as a lot of businesses on the high street will have to get used to, not just apartment stores. And how do you read the commercial property sector more widely at the moment? I mean, you're, it's interesting with you, having bought House of Fraser, you're playing hardball with a lot of the landlords. A lot of them are uh, agreeing to renegotiate rents with you. Others, like Into, have said no. Yeah. Well, I, I think Into simply can't. They win the, they'll win the battle and they'll lose the war. Because they have to understand, it's not that we don't want to pay the, the rents. The rents are now at the wrong levels. The, the, the whole market has shifted downwards. And I tried to explain this today. In Bond Street, the rents are still going up. In Oxford Street, the rents are still going up. That doesn't help me if I'm in Middlesbrough. In Middlesbrough, the rents are plummeting. So therefore, the level of rent currently being paid in Middlesbrough is not realistic. The system was basically built on a premise that everything would gradually go up. Upward only rent reviews, all the other things they have. And in this day and age, that is not realistic. The world has changed. What about some of the other big boys of the commercial property sector, the Hammersons, the yeah. Landsecs, the British lands of this world? Are they, are they being more pragmatic than, uh, than into? Yes, they, ha they have been. That doesn't mean we've been able to do deals, but at least we're a lot closer. And what they crave is information. What they want to understand is, are you just trying to get a cheap rent because you're profiteering, or do we really need to lower these rents? Do we really need to work with you on turnovers? And by the way, who's going to invest in the stores? I said today, a store 100,000 square feet, if it's £150 a square foot shop fit, that's £15 million to refit those House of Fraser stores. When they're borderline making money, that isn't a very realistic prospect. So some of those landlords are going to go, right, if you're going to sign a long lease, you're going to put a sports direct guarantee in it, we're going to join you, and we're, they're essentially going to invest with me to see if we can give that business some longevity. Well, looking at Sports Direct, the backbone of your empire, uh, when you started, it was, a pu you know, it was a pure retail business. Online came along in due course. I mean, if you were starting out again today with a multi-platform, multi-channel business, how many stores in Sports Direct would you realistically have? About 50 in the UK. And that's all? Yeah. Crikey. Yeah. And where do you think... I mean, a lot of people say, look, Sports Direct, it's, it's been overtaken by JD in yeah. recent years. Where did it go wrong? I mean, for, for many, many years, you were the market leader. Well, what happened? Well, I don't think so much Sports Direct went wrong. I think it's, a, it's a, the similar to the flannels. Flannels, it's, it's actually the consumer's habits have changed. They've all gone very branded. So uh, 10 years ago, people would, would rather have a couple of PKs than one expensive branded one. Now with the phones and the pressure and the internet and all the social media, people are going branded. So we have this flannels business, which is actually above JD, which is actually defying all the high street, to want one of my words, it's on fire. But that doesn't mean Sports Direct 
doing anything wrong. That's just the way the consumers are going. And that's why we have to elevate Sports Direct. I mean, obviously, you own lots of brands that you sell through Sports Direct, the likes yep. of Dunlop, Slazenger, and so yep. forth. Are there any brands missing in the portfolio? I mean, what, what would you love to have in there that, uh, that you don't own right now? Besides Nike, but yeah. no, no, I'm being silly. Now, there, there's always lots of brands that you would wish to own. Hackett, for example, nice UK brand, Heritage, that sort of one. It's all about elevation. So all you've got to do is it's a bit like... Uh, what was good enough 10 years ago simply isn't good enough today and the consumers are demanding more. What about uh, French Connection? You own 27% mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. Founder Stephen Marks has put it up for sale. Is that something yeah. you're interested in? Um, not, not particularly because I actually believe Stephen Marks is, is, is the secret source behind French Connection. So for me, I'm very happy with him in it. I wouldn't be trying to... Uh, take him out of it, if I can put it like that. And what about more generally? I mean, what, what would you love to own in terms of assets? If there was anything that was available in, in terms of retail assets, what would you love to have? Selfridges. Selfridges. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. I mean, uh, yeah. no doubt the Western family are watching. So no, 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 no. I can't <laughs> afford it. Let's be crystal clear. Yeah. And what about the, how do you read the consumer right now? I mean, consumer confidence figures out today. We're, we're back to where we were after the referendum. This is a very, very bad, bad time to be going into the the golden quarter. Yeah, it's, it's very, very tough on the high street. If I'm, I'm not talking directly about the Sports Direct group, but essentially, if you've had a five-year trend, you've had the, the retail debt high street down 1%, down 2%, down 3%, down 4%, currently down 5%, you know next year's going to be even worse and it's going to be down 6%. So that's why I say people, if they have to act, they really will have to knock the cover off the ball and really make something happen. You said it would be a good luxury Christmas, good for the luxury yep. retailers. Yep. What about the likes of Amazon though? I mean, if, if your tax comes in, yep. you think you could see Amazon going into physical retail? Oh, they, I, 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 could, I can't guarantee it, but you can, you can rest assured they wouldn't want to pay that 20% tax and they would soon work out how to drive people back into the high street.